but you the also vote live was, in the hive of uh, you also live I in travel, the I I I'm doing shows in North Carolina in the fucking heart of MAGA country. And Everywhere the, you go is the hive. You probably go to Philly. LA is just tarted. Uh Port, dude, you I, go to Portland, you go to Seattle. No. Dude, you, I go to Boise, Idaho. I go okay. to Oh, another that's a hive. That's a hive. Sun Valley. I'll go Okay, that's not a hive. It. I, you name it. I you go to Coeur d'Alene? You've been to Coeur d'Alene? Uh, yeah, I'm, I was in Fort Worth, Texas last week. All right. All Where right. do you think What do you think they are in Fort Worth? I don't know. You know? Oh, I'll type running. it in right here. I'll type it in Fort Worth, blue or red. Oh, it's, so, it's so red in Fort Worth. Hey, you, you want to? I'll, I'll tell you something scary I just realized. What did it say? Fort Worth? I, I don't know. Red. Uh, politics at voting in Fort Worth, uh, 49. Uh, Here we go. Tarrant County, Texas is leaning liberal. Tarrant County, Texas, 49.3% wow. of the people voted Democrat in the latest presidential election. 49. It's close. 49.1 Republican. Um, you know what's fat? So I grew up in the Bay Area. I never knew anyone who died of AIDS during the AIDS scare. And, and I'm a California boy, and I grew up during that whole, that whole I thing. Know, I know people that have died of AIDS. Yeah, I mean, you're in the real – you're in the – I mean, Southern California, yeah. I was in the Bay Area, yeah. though. I was in the Bay Area, uh, Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco. And I also don't know anyone who is uh, has died from COVID. Oh, and I know a bunch of COVID deaths. You do? Yeah. Yeah, a bunch. But, but I do know a shitload of people who've been molested. I do that, too. And a sh lot, look, shitload. I, I'm in L.A. Yeah. So it's pretty much... they. they 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 should change the Hollywood sign to say either daddy didn't love me or daddy loved me too much. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, you've got, you got a lot of people, I, people always say comedians are talented. I'm like, we're not talented. We're disabled. Like, hey, you're the only, you're one of the only few comedians. You and Justin Nunley are the only two comedians I've ever been able to have a conversation with the other 20 or 30 I've had on my podcast. It is a fucking disaster. Why they're always doing bits. No, they, 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 They don't know how to talk. Really? Some of the best conversations I've ever had are with comedians. Who does the last guy I had on? I had the guy from Kill Tony on. Oh, Tony Hinchcliffe? No. Brian Redband? No, no one that big. The black guy who's just blowing up now. He's their okay. roaster. He, they call him the roaster. Oh, I don't know who that Joe is. Rogan just paid him a hundred thousand is gonna pay him a hundred thousand dollars. He's in a competition with Red Man or Red Band to see who can lose the most weight in four months. He's Fucking gonna get a hundred grand? If he loses more weight than Red Band. But does Red Band get a hundred grand if he wins? I need to show you that footage. He was on my podcast and and, and so, yeah, yeah, and he gets a hundred. Who the person who wins gets a hundred grand, whoever loses the most weight. They have four months to do it. So I had him on my podcast and like he couldn't he couldn't even talk. I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I had a uh, Hans on, the the guy who opens for oh, Rogan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't I? I did, couldn't talk. He does. He doesn't. He doesn't converse. Dude, Jason Hopper makes him look like he's. Like, Jason Hopper's a fucking twelve compared to these guys. I, I had I, I had I, on I look, another so guy. I, so, so I've done five hundred episodes or so of talking mm -hmm. shit, and mm -hmm. I've done five hundred episodes of of uh, Wadcast. And I will say it is much harder talking to CrossFitters than it is comedians. All right, fine. All right. CrossFitters are so one dimensional. The majority of them, yeah. it's very rare that I find one that is, uh, that is interesting other than the OGs. Mm. The OGs all have this like multi-dimensional kind of thing going on where the, the new ones are, especially the ones that have been crossfitting since they were 14 years old. They go to the gym, they work out, they eat, they do their shit, they come home, they get back up, they work out again. Yeah, yeah. Like, they got nothing else. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, you talk to someone like a Chris Spieler, you've got, you know, he's a, into Jesus. He was a wrestler. He likes to race motocross. and He's and, a dad. Yeah. Dad, you feel got, sorry for himself because he's short. Yeah, you got a ton of shit going on there. Yeah, but yeah. for the most, and then the girls, I mean, like, I, I used to do Love Line with Dr. Drew a lot. And Dr. No Drew. No shit, you did? He, yeah. And Dr. Drew used to write a, uh, he wrote a book. Wait called a the second. Mirror Effect. I thought you, like, if Adam was out, you did the show? 
Yeah, I filled in. I was funny thing is I was the last co-host ever. They brought me in to try me out to be the co-host of the show. And I was just a guest all the time, but they brought me in to co-host it when Mike psycho Mike left. And, uh, and I sit down, I'm all excited. I'm trying out for a week. And, uh, Dr. Drew goes, did you hear? And I go, what? He goes, I'm leaving. And I'm like, you're what? He's like, yeah, I, I quit the show. And I'm like, so what's happening? He's like, show's over. And I'm like, there goes that job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I used to listen to that show on a, on a radio in my bed at night. That and Dr. Ruth. Yeah, it's a great show. So anyway, what Dr. Drew, he wrote a book. It's a very good book called The Mirror Effect about narcissism. And he had a test that he would give, like a psychological test that he would give all his guests. And he had everyone from CEOs to actors to blah, blah, blah. And he could tell you like who ranked high on the narcissism scale. Mirror now, Effect. After reading this and hearing from him, I would say that uh, female CrossFit athletes more than male CrossFit athletes, just like female actresses more than male actors. And this is not an indictment against women. This is just, and I will get to why this happens. Female CrossFitters are more narcissistic than male CrossFit. And the reason being that they say actresses to actors is that actresses are more valued for their appearance rather than their performance as an actress. Mm. Whereas an actor, it's all about his acting ability and it's not about his appearance so much. Like there's a lot of ugly dude actors out there that are famous and successful. Whereas as a female, you have to be pretty good looking to be successful. Mm. So then women's value is based on that. Like that is their value. I'm not saying, I'm not saying this. I'm saying this is, was the theory there. And I'm, I'm not saying it's a good thing. And, but I think the same thing goes on with CrossFit. It goes back to what I was talking about before, about the algorithms and everything that these girls, that a lot of it is based on their looks. You know, you'll get a girl, uh, you know, a hotter chick. So like you take one of the Sigmund's daughters or whatever, that's like, you know, got this look about her that's, and I guarantee she's getting more sponsorship than a Tia Claire Toomey who beats her ass every single time. Wow. And, and why is that? But that won't happen in the, like you take a guy like Marcus Philly, Marcus Philly's not going to make more money than a, than a Matt Frazier. Right. Right. And, right, and right. why, and why is that? So even, that, even though he looks like a statue and, and, and Matt doesn't. Right. And so my point being, it's not, it's, that's not fair to women, but that's created, you know, it's that whole, you know, um, what's it sex sexualized or whatever it is, the, the whole culture of it. And I don't know if it's a good thing. I mean, I, it's, I feel bad for women that like, I, Hey, I, I think with Dan, I, I don't think Danielle Brandon, I think Danielle Brandon is 50% swagger. Really? Yeah. I don't look at her. I don't look at her and like she's fucking drop dead gorgeous. I don't see that I gotta, at all. I got I, I got to watch her more. And 